Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Now some of you may have wondered whether content is going to continue on the YouTube channel, especially after the end of the phone data review. Well, the fact is the final episode in the uh, phone data review series, episode 50, um, it's just been taking a long time to uh, edit that episode. Um, the uh, audio is available on Patreon. Um, it's just been kind of, I guess, more of a mental block than anything else, uh, getting around to doing the video edit version of that, that final episode. I wanted to kind of go to a little bit of extra trouble. In this episode, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey um, into my world um, beyond my home. Uh, walking with giraffes. There's a, a baby giraffe that, that was just born recently on our farm, so I'm going to take you through that. Uh, I will also talk to you guys a little bit about uh, what's coming soon uh, on uh, on Patreon and on this channel. Um, but I'll do that uh, as we sort of go after we've gone through a little bit of the, um, the nature aspect. So yesterday afternoon, I went with my father uh, to our farm. We went in, in his Land Rover. Uh, he's got a Land Rover. He actually had, I'm not sure if he still has two Land Rovers. He's also got a Jeep, but um, the one Land Rover my sister's driving. I'm not 100% sure if she owns it or whether she's using it, but, but there are two Land Rovers. And sometimes when you visit my father's, house there'll be three or four Land Rovers just on the driveway um, uh, so it, it can look like kind of a four by four mecca sometimes to people passing by so some of you may or may not be aware that uh, you know there's been a new arrival uh, a baby giraffe it was born about two weeks ago although we can't be 100% certain exactly when he was born because giraffes do tend to hide away their young, uh, sometimes for about two weeks. And um, the the strange thing was, I hadn't seen my father for quite a while, uh, months actually. And on the day that we saw each other, we went to the farm and on that day we saw the giraffe and it was the first time he'd seen it as well. Uh, I think he was aware that the female was pregnant, but um, I think he thought it was still quite a long time away. And so, he was as surprised as I was when we saw this baby giraffe just sort of standing there. And then not long after that, the baby giraffe disappeared. Um, he just didn't see him and we, we were quite worried. He said he was very worried that something had happened to the giraffe. Um, you know, if you are out, um, you, you might think that things are very serene and tranquil you see the um, the antelope sort of looking quite peaceful and, you know, the birds chirping and so on. But the reality is this is um, um, sort of wild Africa. Uh, there may not be lions right in this particular area, but there are quite a few other predators like servals. You can Google that if you like. There are um, a lynx, which is almost like a mountain lion and... There are jackals, uh, not ordinary jackals, they're sort of super predator jackals. they jackals that have survived the attempts by farmers and other hunters to shoot them. And so these are very um, clever, strategic hunters. And they're also very good at what they do. One of the things that they will do is uh, they will use the, the fences uh, bordering properties to sort of trap animals they use that as part of their hunting strategy and so you can imagine when you have a new arrival like this you sort of worry that 
Um, you know, is he going to make it? Um, and th- that's the critical first month or so. If he can survive that, then he will likely survive. There are other predators to worry about as well. Uh, through the course of us having our farm, we've had, um, I wouldn't call them wild dogs. They, they Dogs from neighboring properties will sometimes enter the property through holes in a fence or something and um, attack certain animals. It might be um, a young calf or something. So we've got cows on our, our farm, but also um, various wild animals, including uh, wildebeest. Um, uh, I'm not sure how you say that in English. I think it's a, a gnu. Um, lots of ostriches, uh, lots of zebra. Nyala, I'm not sure what the Latin name is for the Nyala. It's N-Y-A-L-A. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that later on. And then, of course, the giraffe. Um, there are also blessbuck and impala and, and quite a lot of springbuck as well. Uh, we've also got leguan or monitor lizards, but they, they swim in the river. And um, we used to have otters. I'm not 100% sure if we still got them. And then there's smaller critters like ground squirrels, um, yellow mongoose, and meerkats, and spring ears, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so there's quite a few um, you know, different animals. There's also fish eagles and um, some quite interesting bird life. So what is quite also quite interesting on the um, trip to the farm, um, to be honest, I was a little bit on edge because... I thought I was going to have to put Timmy in a sort of a um, cordoned off area at home and, and that when I got home he was going to be very unhappy having been left alone for two hours and I didn't want to do that. So I did leave him with a neighbor but the minute I left him I could hear him shrieking you know and uh I was. I actually kind of thought that the neighbor was going to call me 20 minutes later and just say, "Just come and take your dog." And but fortunately, that didn't happen. In any way, in any event, um, uh, we found the the giraffes very easily. Um, and what was quite interesting was the baby was actually sitting on the ground, um, and that's something I don't think I've ever seen before. If you'd asked me, do giraffes sit, I, I probably would have said, I don't know, or I don't think so. But th- yeah, we you could actually see the baby giraffe sitting. Um, whether the adults sit, I, I, I highly doubt it. Um, it is a very dangerous thing for uh, certain animals to sit. Um, and, and this includes horses. If they off their legs for long enough, they, they they run the risk that they can't actually stand on them again. So in other words, by standing, they are activating their leg muscles. And if they aren't standing for a length of time, there's a, it's almost like a, a human being going to the moon or going out into space um, where there's less gravity. When you come back, you, you will need to learn to some extent, how to deal with gravity again. And I won't say you're going to need to learn to walk again, but you, you would have difficulty. Now, with animals, um, I'm not saying, you know, if he sits down for a day, that, that that's the end for him. Just that an animal can't really afford to be wobbly on their legs in a situation where they've got to constantly outrun predators. You know, if I can compare wildlife to true crime for a moment, you know, there are murders going on all the time, except it's natural. You know, it's the, the law of nature. It is the f- survival of the fittest. Mm. And so t- to defend themselves, animals just need to stay alert um, and stay on their feet, right? So a couple of other things that are quite interesting about the giraffe that some of you might not know is the baby inherits his spots from his mother and only from his mother and um, what's quite idiosyncratic with this baby giraffe we haven't given him a name yet but he has a it looks like a a line running 
around one side of his flank and that's quite interesting um, and then you can see the mother has that same line it's harder to see on these photos but you can quite clearly see it when the mother's moving and she's or oriented the right way what is also interesting on this particular visit was the zebras were quite frisky and two in particular were sort of um, they were both males obviously and they were both doing their thing uh, trying to sort of establish dominance and you know from a photographer's perspective it's, it's always quite something to see the zebras um, doing things like rising up against each other on their hind legs they did quite a few times where I didn't actually manage to get the shot um, they did a couple of times where I did get the shot but not very well but I did capture a shot where one of them kicked out at the other and um, but in general it, it's quite something seeing a, a bunch of zebras together you, you often get some creative opportunity to um, play with the the patterns of the sort of pajamas something else that's I guess quite interesting with the giraffes is that they the male the top of his horns are actually bald um, and I've actually got a photo of that where you can actually see th that the top of the horns have no hair now you might think that that is normal but from the side angle you can see there's a heck of a lot of hair around those horns they, they, they're quite if you think of a giraffe's horns that they're quite they're quite strange like why would a giraffe even need horns if you compare it to other antelope other antelope use it to sort of um, clash with one another right and maybe as defense with predators but giraffe I'm just saying it is strange that they have horns at all um, you know they're so high in the air why, why do they need it um, I think it is to some extent uh, in terms of defense to some extent but um, you know giraffes use it more for use their, their limbs more for kicking uh, they use their limbs to defend themselves and when male giraffes sort of encounter one another they they will hit each other with their necks um, but I suppose there's probably a certain amount of where the the horns can be used as a almost like a buffer if you are being assaulted with the neck of another giraffe it's sort of just almost like a, a way of prodding the neck away kind of thing i'm just saying it's kind of a funny thing that their horns there to begin with because they're such small little horns so one of the reasons the animals are so tame is because when the Land Rover arrives and you know, it's feeding time and the ostriches are so tame they will actually stick their heads through the passenger windows of the Land Rover and if you're not careful you know you can sort of be looking on your cell phone or something and the next thing there's an ostrich head like right in front of you like inside the car sometimes more than one and uh, you kind of get the same feeling a little bit when you step out the vehicle uh, you might have a, a zebra curiously sort of wanting to sniff your elbow or your shorts or something and you don't know they're there you know kind of thing so it is quite a weird feeling uh, it's nothing like in Botswana where when you camp you've got to be on the lookout for lions it is literally like um, being in the vicinity of a murderer uh, you could get murdered if you not not careful uh, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, if you camp in Botswana, there are campsites where lions can literally walk through your camp. Um, I'm not saying that you will definitely lose your life if that happens, just that the, the chances are it's possible. So it's literally like having a murderer walking around. There are things that happen every now and then. You hear about people sleeping in their tents and a hyena will drag a, a small child right out of the tent in other words might smell the child's shoe or foot or something clamp onto the foot with their jaw and then run off thinking it's some meat or something and it's, and it's a living child so 
these things can can kind of happen. Um, if a lion does come into camp, uh, you don't take your chances. You don't sort of sit there going, okay, well, what will be will be. You need to get onto the top of the Land Rover or get inside. And my father's got quite a few stories of them, um, you know, in the middle of camping or something, suddenly having to evacuate and spending the entire night sort of huddled on the top of a Land Rover while the lions have a grand time eating their barbecue kind of thing. Um, no such issues here. Uh, there aren't lions, as I've said earlier, in this area. Um, there are buffalo, not in this particular area, but not that far away. And, um, you know, I, I did actually ask my father, I met uh, another game farmer who was who breeds buffalo and was selling them. And I just asked him if he would be interested. And he, he just said, they're just too dangerous. You, you wouldn't really be very safe walking around. Um, I think after the hippopotamus, the buffalo is the most dangerous animal in Africa. And this includes predators. So if you wandering around, your chance is the best of coming to harm from a hippopotamus. And then I think it's the buffalo. Um, I think people are tend streak. to be lulled into a false Let's sense see. of security with those animals, whereas with lions, sure. most people tend to know to be careful and to roll up the windows and all that kind of thing. So I thought I there. got a couple of good I photos where there was a combination of antelope and like zebra and... Um, when uh, giraffe, just in terms of colors and shapes and so on. Um, for me, my favorite antelope, uh, South African antelope, is the impala. It's not the most spectacular, it's not the biggest. Um, I just sort of like the look. I, I don't know, it's just a, just a personal preference. Um, South Africa's national antelope is the springbuck. Um, our rugby team is named after them, but I really like the Impala, it's just got a very sweet look about them, a uh, very elegant look about them. Um, but there's a whole host of really amazing antelope across the board. Um, the Gemsbok or the Oryx is pretty amazing. I kind of think of them more as the sort of desert antelope. You tend to get them a lot in Namibia. Um, the Springbok's also a very sweet animal and you know we actually hand raised some of them at home and you'll be surprised how big their ears are they i would say that their ears are even bigger than proportionately bigger than uh, than a rabbit's ears it's, they've got really big ears and they've got the most amazing furry little mouths um and they are I, you know a couple of times i would come back from gym and the springbok would lick the salt off my arm if i if i'd perspired or something and then you just get a sense of just how soft and velvety their, um, their mouths are. So I did try and just get a photo for texture in terms of the patterns of the uh, giraffe and the zebra, which I don't think you often see together. And so that was just something I would try to do. And just a couple of shots of the zebra on its own, uh, sorry, giraffe on its own, the baby giraffe, and the parents eating. Uh, out of the trough uh, it has to be elevated because they would have they can drink uh, at, at the ground level uh, they sort of spread their, their front legs open they drink at ground level but when they eat um, they need to they need some elevation I think it's a bit harder for them to eat at ground level otherwise they would um, so that's why that trough is sort of up in the air so there were some quite interesting juxtapositions where you see the ostriches with the giraffe behind them or the giraffe with ostriches um, just kind of long neck creatures and just giving you kind of a, um, a a weird mirror image in the animal kingdom of these these these, these animals and then um, yeah there's was kind of interesting scene where you see the giraffe having finished his meal licking his lips and actually sticking his nose his tongue into his nose which is 
kind of gross, uh, but I guess also quite funny. And then um, th this is my favorite series of photos, just where the parents were about to, to sort of head back into the bush and they sort of, um, you know, gave the little baby giraffe a sort of a lick on the top of the head. And I, I just really like that image because you, you see the detail of the parent's body and the, um, you know, on the one side you see the giraffe texture and on the other side you see the texture of the bush, the thorns. Some of those thorns are huge, those, those white thorns are really big. And then that was it. Then we uh, turned around, um, uh, fed some of the ground squirrels on the way out. Just across the bridge, um, Anyala was uh, sort of posturing, doing sort of his male posturing thing and literally charged the vehicle. He's actually um, uh, caused punctures already where he's charged the vehicle, horns first and actually punctured the vehicle, so the, the tires. Uh, my father quickly put the vehicle in reverse on this occasion and... Uh, fortunately, we didn't have to fix any flat tires. Um, and then I got, uh, th then it actually started raining um, quite strangely. We don't get a lot of rain out yet, so, and certainly in winter we get no rain, so this little shower of rain was, I guess, a, a sign of summer or summer coming, and uh, probably why the animals are getting kind of frisky. Um, you know, they are looking forward to. Uh, the green shoots coming out. Uh, I, I really don't know how these giraffe even survive just because they are sort of, there are no leaves as far as the eye can see. And my father was saying they actually eat the tops of a certain kind of bush. Um, but certainly in terms of trees, they're getting virtually no sustenance in winter. So I'm sure they can't wait for summer. There was a bit of a mishap when I got home. Um, my father dropped me off. I took my camera bag out. The minute he dropped me off, I realized my phone and my keys had actually sort of slipped out of the bag, sort of got a, like a netting pouch. And because the, the bag was on its side, it sort of slipped out. And so I was immediately screwed. I didn't have my keys or my phone and I, I was stuck. I couldn't obviously get to my car, couldn't get into where I needed to get into. Of course, Timmy was still being dog sat, and I was going to be late for that. But anyway, ultimately, the dog sitter took me to um, pick up my keys and my phone, and um, and then we actually went out for a drink after that. And so, all in all, it was quite a quite an interesting day. I'm sure you'll agree that some of the photos are not not too bad. Some people on Patreon have asked me what kind of giraffe is it is it a boy or a girl we don't know at this point someone also asked do we have names for the animals my father has names for most of them um, he even has names for the ostriches which I can't really tell apart and names for the zebras I can't really tell most of them apart I can tell some of them uh, but he, he knows them really well Okay, and that's that. Uh, in terms of uh, what's available on Patreon, I am almost done with uh, Rape of Cassandra, book four in the Two-Face series. I'm at chapter 17 has been uploaded. There are probably about three or four chapters to go, then the complete audio book will be available on the $10 tier. That's book four in the nine-part Two-Face series. Today... Um, at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm doing a discussion with three other patrons and we're going to talk about the um, series on becoming a god in uh, Central Florida starring Kirsten Dunst. It's a really excellent show and it's got some amazing and um, kind of troubling parallels. It's sort of a dark comedy but it's certainly got some uh, disturbing parallels to the whole MLM thing and so we're going to be discussing that the four of us I might put a little preview to that on YouTube um, within the next day or so look out for episode 50 um, that'll also be coming probably within the next week and then on Monday on Patreon 
Um, I'll be continuing to analyze the Lindstrom interview, uh, the 70 minutes, I'm just breaking down into 10 minutes and just looking at what was talked about, what wasn't and what we make of it. Then there's a new series every Tuesday on Patreon called Cindy's Blitz, where we analyze her exclusive interview, uh, one of the few times she sort of went public and that was between the announcement of the plea deal and the sentencing hearing. And then finally, one of the patrons brought a video of Shanann's to my attention and I put that up on Patreon and there's been a lot of discussion about it, just um, how um, vulnerable Shanann seems in that video. And so um, that is something, so far there's been a lot of discussion about it, but I'm, I'm yet to analyze that video. So I'm just waiting for everyone to watch it and get a sense of what they think and share their thoughts. And then I will do an analysis of that on Patreon. And once again, I might do a little preview of it right here on YouTube. Thank you for listening. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you'd like to become a patron on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description. There are literally hundreds of videos, blogs, photos, audio, and so on that you can access. I put up about three posts a day on Patreon. And uh, if you enjoyed Crime Rocket, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Crime Rocket, but with a lot more um, videos and uh, interactivity um, on a daily basis. There's also a certain amount of behind the scenes coverage, such as what I've done for you guys here on YouTube, just showing some of these photos from my neck of the woods. So thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.